Here is a quick video recap of our intermediate four-count Hassa lesson, which was taught at the October 2016 Madison Dance Club Dance. We have dubbed over a new soundtrack because there was way too much echo in the original. We started by working on our basic in-out step. We concentrated on keeping our arms bent. If we let our arms get out too far, we lose balance, control, and feeling. We keep ourselves level as we dance. We don't want a dropping or dipping motion. We keep ourselves upright and vertical as opposed to having our shoulders go out or our butts go out or our feet go out. We want to keep all the smooth. We have little stretchy rubber bands in our elbows and our fingers. We don't want it to get jerky like this. By improving these basic moves, our whole dance will improve. Many people struggle when they try to do more complex moves because they're out of touch and out of balance and out of control from the basic moves. Next, as we went in and out, we shook hands, walked forward and to the left to meet our partner, and arced our arm up around into what would be called a shadow or a sweetheart or maybe a front-back position. We walked slowly around in a circle, but not so far around in a circle that we got ourselves dizzy. To get out, we release our left hand, stop walking, and push slowly, gently down in a small motion with our right arm. Leading requires precision and timing. I think of dancing like putting a nut on a bull. To get the nut on, you have to take it and carefully, precisely get it started, and with little tiny motions, get going. Instead, if you take a hammer and put it on and wrap it, it's no good. Repeating to get my partner to come in and go out in this move, I use very little force. If we do this same move, but we come in and go out and in and out several times in a row, it becomes a move in its own. In the lesson, we were doing this three times, then doing a double arm underarm turn. The double arm underarm turn is the magic step which allows a leader to take a dizzy partner and get him at least most of the way undizzy. As we did this step, we talked about the fact that the follower's feet have to slip on the floor. If we do it and have our feet suction cup to the floor, it just won't work and we may hurt our knees. In the lesson, we did a very simple drill which you can do at home in which you rotated your head, shoulders, and body and allowed your feet to slip underneath you so you can get this feeling of slippery feet as opposed to suction cup feet. Using this concept of slippery feet, we went into our next move. Starting in shadow position, the leader stopped, released the left hand, pulled slightly back, but up on the right hand to initiate a spin. During a spin, the leader's job is to initiate the spin, follow the follower as they move, and then let the arm down to stop the spin. The follower's job during the spin is to make sure that their feet are slipping and to relax their arm while it's up there so it's not pulling themselves off balance. All together at normal speed, without a lot of talking or slow motion, we worked on our basic step, we worked on our double arm underarm turn, we got into shadow position, we got out of shadow position, we went in and out several times from shadow position. And to conclude, we did a spin out of shadow position. We hope you enjoyed the lesson and that you'll learn something from the lesson and that you'll join us in December when we work on East Coast Swing.